The next step and kind of the characteristic step of a proof by mathematical induction is we're going to assume that there is some value out there um, that will work for this statement, right? And we already know there is one, but now I'm going to prove it for an arbitrary one, right? Or assume it for an arbitrary one. So I'm going to assume that the statement is true for some arbitrary value and I'm going to call it k. So I'm going to say k has to fit all of the same criteria that n does, which is namely that it's a positive integer. Um, so I'm going to say, or did I say positive integer? Yeah, I did. So there we go. So I'm going to go uh, use the subset. There we go. Okay, so k obeys all the same uh, rules that n does, and now I just need to state the statement with k's instead of n's. So I'm going to have um, a to the k, um, i.e. a to the k plus 1 over a to the k is going to be greater than or equal to a to the k minus 1 plus its reciprocal. Okay, so I've just made this assumption. Um, I don't know what I can do with it yet, but now I need to think about, well, what's the thing I'm kind of try, going to try and prove off the basis of this? So I'm going to look at the next step along, which is the k plus 1 step. So now I am required to prove that um, it's true for the next step along, given that it's true for the previous step. I.e., all right, let's do our substitution. I'm going to get a to the k plus 1 plus 1 over a to the k plus 1. And then when I put in k plus 1 on the right-hand side, because you've got that minus 1 and they just kind of balance out, you get a to the k plus 1 over a to the k on the right-hand side. Okay, so I don't know that this is true. This is what I'm setting out to prove, okay? Now, there's a bunch of different ways to do this, but um, you, know, you could, for example, start with the, um, the left-hand side of this, um, manipulate it until you see, you know, say this left-hand side, make a substitution. That's a fairly straightforward way to do it. Um, another way is you could you know, gather everything onto one side, you know, subtract all of this on the left-hand side, um, and then you prove that it's greater than or equal to zero. That would also work. Um, but the particular method that I'm gonna use today is I'm just gonna start from the assumption, right? And then I'm going to um, mold and shape the assumption until it looks as close as possible to the k plus 1 case that I'm trying to prove, okay? So, uh, I'm going to begin by saying, uh, let's write this, um, and I'm assuming this to be true, so I'm going to say, well, I should say that this is my proof, by the way, so let's just grab that over there. Here comes the proof. So I'm just gonna begin with this statement that came from the assumption, so I'll say, by assumption. So this frees me from having to try and manipulate the um, you know, one of these terms to try and make it look like the assumption. I've just used it already and used it as my um, math foundation, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to try and get this toward um, something that looks like this, right? That's where I'm headed. Uh, and to me, the most straightforward thing to do is to say, well, I've got an a to the k and I want it to look a bit like the a to the k plus 1. So, you know, it's either you make this thing look like that or vice versa. So I'm doing the vice versa, right? What I'm going to do is to get from um, this a to the k and make it look like an a to the k plus 1, it's a fairly straightforward thing to do. I just multiply everything through by a, right? Um, that will give me, with my index laws, a to the k plus 1 in the first instance. And then, um, just to have a careful look at what happens to all our terms here, right? Um, I'll do this just to make the working, you know, I think easier to follow. If I multiply by a, then it appears on the numerator there. But then you've got this a to the k that's still on that denominator from the original line. Now, these two are going to play ball. I'm going to get some negative indices there, but I'm just not going to do it yet because um, it's pretty easy to get confused mixing them up. And um, you'll see why in a second I'm going to adjust it, okay? Uh, greater than or equal to, and I'm multiplying everything on the right hand side also by a. So this is just going to be a to the k because I just add 1 to that index. And then same deal over here, I'm going to write that a on the numerator and I'm just going to have a k, a to the k minus 1 on the denominator. Okay, now what I want to do is um, to make this easier to work with, um, I'm going to get these fractions, um, all of the a's that are in the fractions, I'm going to combine them together. So it's sort of like collecting like terms but in index form, right? So to do that uh, and make it very obvious, I'm going to divide both the top and bottom of our fractions by a. Right, so the fractions remain equivalent, but it's going to get rid of the a's that we see on the denominator, or the numerator, I should say. The ones on the top are going to get rid of, and um, what's going to happen is you're going to get ones on the bottom. Now, on the left-hand side, what that means is you have that 1 on the numerator, but because you're dividing, that means subtraction of indices, right? So I'm going to get a to the k minus 1. 
Just pause there. The reason why I'm sort of drawing this out into two lines, some people might say like, can't you just do this straight away? When um, I was marking student responses to this question, this was a common thing that got, um, that students got confused by, right? They were dividing through by A, so they thought, um, they were multiplying through by A, so they saw that A to the K and thought, oh, well, I know what happens when you multiply through by the same base, you add to the index, not noticing that this was on the denominator. So really it's division, so therefore you're actually sort of dividing by this division, which means it's multiplication, you can see you're getting caught up in essentially a double negative situation. So, so drawing this out into two or two and a half lines is my way of knowing I get these indices correct. Again, a very common error to make. I'm gonna do the same thing uh, on the right hand side. So you can see here, I'm gonna get a one on the numerator and then this a to the k minus one, you divide it by a, that gives you k minus two. All right, now, at this point, what I want to do is again move toward um, what I've got here in my um, k plus one case, right? So I've already got this a to the k plus one, so I can sort of tick that off, but I'm missing a one over a to the k plus one, and I've got this term instead, okay? So I'm going to do two things at once, which is a bit dicey, but you'll see why in a second. I think you'll be able to follow it. Firstly, um, this uh, a to the k minus one term, let's just highlight that in purple. Um, I don't want it on the left hand side, it doesn't belong there, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract it from both sides. So that leaves me with everything here is unchanged. But then I'm going to subtract this uh, 1 over a to the k minus 1 term um, and I'm getting it from over here. Okay, so, so far so good. At the same time, you might notice that what I actually want is um, I want this term also to appear, right? So let's just highlight that in, in blue right there. So I want that to appear on the left-hand side and it's not there, so therefore I'm gonna add it in. I'm gonna say plus one over a to the k plus one. And of course, if you add it to the left, you had better be adding it to the right like so, right? So I hope you're satisfied with that. You can see I've subtracted this from both sides, landing it over here, and then I've added this simultaneously to the left and right hand side, okay? Now, what's great about this is a bunch of things. Let's just carefully have a look at, um, I'm just gonna highlight this like so. This is where I wanna head, this is my destination, right? And uh, then you can see my final line of working currently, my current line of working, I should say. Let's just step through it one step at a time so we can have a, you know, we've, we've done a bunch of algebraic manipulation. I wanna know I'm headed in the right direction, okay? As I step through it one at a time, you'll see I've checked off a lot of things, right? Firstly, this a to the k plus one term. I've got that, right? So I'm gonna say, that looks good. It doesn't need to go anywhere. I've also got this one over a to the k plus one term. It's right here. So check, the whole left-hand side is exactly the way that I want it. So that's looking good. Inequality is facing the correct direction. That's always a good sign. And then lastly, uh, in terms of what I've got already, you've got this a to the k term on the right-hand side, which is right there. So you're like, check. Also good, right? All that leaves me with is this. Okay, now that looks like a huge mess. And what I want it to look like is, um, is this, right? I want it to, I don't know why that did that. I meant to select, there we go. I want this, one over a to the k. I wanna work on this term here and show that it is greater than or equal to this. That is the destination. It's very messy, but I should be able to get there. And um, there's still a bit of a curveball to go, but you can see the path that I'm headed toward. Everything else looks good. I'm not even going to write the um, left-hand side anymore because it's perfect. Um, I'm just gonna work on these terms on the right-hand side. The a to the k is there, and then I'll look at this. And I'm like, hmm. What do I do with it, okay? Now, you've got all of these denominators that you can see are very closely related. They have all got the same base, A, and then they've also got something that I want, namely this, um, this K index, right? You can see it right here, here, and here, but then you've got this other stuff that's floating around, okay? So in order to try and get at the bit that I want, um, I'm going to factorize out one over A to the K, and the reason I can do that is because it's here and here, and here it appears all three times. So if I just factorize that out, one over a to the k, what does that leave me with in the brackets? Just be super careful. We've already noticed the index laws have been flying around um, thick and fast. So I'm gonna do as, as few changes as possible here, okay? On the denominator of the first fraction, I've taken out that a to the k. What gets left behind is a to the negative two. I hope you can see that right there. It just comes along for the ride, okay? When I go along to the next term, same deal, except it's a to the negative one. And then lastly, I've got a one over a to the one, which is just a. 
okay? Does that look okay to you, right? What have I done? I've, I've taken all the common factors out of A to the K and that's left me with the rest of this stuff, the rest of the A's on the denominator that you can see, all right? Now, hold up for a second, right? Look at this, this is looking very promising, okay? I've got the A to the K that I saw before, it's here. I've got the one on A to the K right there and then I've just got this stuff over here, okay? Now, if this object over here is greater than or equal to one, then it's going to be multiplying by one on a to the k. So you can see you're going to get this result here, right? If it's one or if it's one and a half or two, then this result will be greater than or equal to this result. And that's what I'm after, okay? So therefore, now I'm kind of like collapsing down. I'm focusing in. You can see I don't need to worry about the left-hand side anymore. Don't need to worry about this a to the k anymore. I don't even need to worry about this one on a to the k. I'm just focusing on this. And what I want to prove that it's greater than or equal to one, because then when I multiply, by one on a to the k, then I get one on a to the k, or something bigger, which is what I'm after, okay? So let's try and rework this, right? I can go greater than uh, all of this stuff here. I'm just gonna leave it as is. Um, I've got, I was very cautious with these indices, right? Cause you've got negative indices flying around and a lot of factorization. Now I'm ready to sort of put it into a more helpful form. I've got a negative index, but it's on the denominator. So therefore one on a to the negative two is just a squared. Same deal with one on a to the negative one, it's just minus a, um, and I'm gonna leave that one over a right there, okay? Take a breath. Now here is the last little curveball, okay? How do I prove that this object here, let's just go back to this, I wanna prove that this is greater than, uh, what am I, I'll just use the symbol, I don't know why I'm making it so hard for myself. I want to prove that it's greater than or equal to one, okay? Now, you've got a couple of options here, right? And one of the options that is a really good candidate is one that you already use today, which is just going back to our testing, our base case. We got this um, one, uh, sorry, a plus one over a. And I needed to prove that it was greater than or equal to two. And we used calculus to do it, okay? Now you can pull that exact same trip, trick on this function here, right? This is a real function, right? And I can um, look at this and think, okay, well, can I find some stationary points? Can I prove that they're minima? And off you go, okay? Now, it's totally doable. You can, okay? However, um, and let me just prove that you can, okay? Let's just have a think about what this function is going to look like. I'm just going to grab it over here. Um, if I graph this as, uh, I'm just going to do it in x because same deal, doesn't matter what the variable is called, um, x squared minus x plus 1 over x. Okay, now for starters, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, I should have just adjusted my domain here because I don't need to worry about the uh, part that's uh, to the left um, over there that's negative because we know that A has to be greater than zero. So it's just really that part over there. So when you have a look here, right, you can see, uh, there we, uh, am I gonna get my uh, scale right? Oh, I think you can read it, right? Can you see there, oh, there we go. No, 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 that'll, fine. that'll be fine, right? <laughs> Sorry, talking to myself. You can see this function here, right? It does indeed have a minimum, just like we did when we were testing our base case, and the minimum is right there at one. We wanted to be proving that this was greater than or equal to one. What a relief that it actually is. So I can go ahead and I can pull calculus on this. However, the reason I'm not gonna do it in this case is because when you go and have a look at this function, to prove that this is gonna have a minimum turning point, to find your derivative, all that kind of thing, because of the particular function that you've got here, when you differentiate um, or indeed find your second derivative, you're gonna be dealing with a cubic and it's pretty gross. It's, it's not nice to deal with. Um, cubic functions, we used to spend a lot more time on polynomials and how to factorize them and solve them and all that kind of thing. Um, but cubics are gross. In fact, fun fact, um, cubic functions are so gross that back in the, I wanna say 1500s, um, Italian mathematicians had so much trouble with uh, trying to solve cubic polynomials, they literally had to invent complex numbers to do it. So there's a fun little story there that you can explore if you like. Um, but what I wanna suggest is there's actually a different tool that we can use. Um, and I think it's interesting because we've already used calculus today. There's a different tool that we can use to prove that this thing is greater than or equal to one.